Uh, I want to introduce the first speaker, uh, Shiori Yanai. Uh, are you there? <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I will uh, briefly introduce uh, Dr. Shiori. Uh, she graduated from uh, Yamaguchi University in 2007. Since 2013, uh, she has been working at the Classic Medical Center with uh, Dr. Masaki Ando. Maybe every uh, many of you know about him. He's a junior surgeon. Uh, currently, as Dr. Ando's member, uh, number one uh, dis uh, discipline, uh, she is very active uh, through surgery and the conference activity and is one of the today's most promising rising star, I think. Uh, today, uh, at this time, she gave an excellent presentation at the APH JSGOE conference too. So, we ask her to talk in this webinar. Uh, I hope uh, everyone uh, enjoy uh, that uh, his uh, her talk. Okay, Dr. Shiori, can you start your presentation now? Thank you, <laughs> Masaho. <laughs> and I'm very honored to speak such a wonderful webinar today. And today, um, I uh, would like to introduce the uh, um, pleasant scenario about the basic concept regarding the fascia and the application to gynecologic surgery. Let's start. It's okay? Yep, we can uh, see you. Uh, and notice natural existence, the fascial concept applicable to gynecologic surgery. In 1988, Dr. Hilde advocated the concept of the potential layer, so-called fascia, surrounding the mesolectum that is easier to dissect and name it the holy plane. This concept forms the basis of current total mesolectal excision for rectal cancer. Such theories have been further developed in various fields due to advance in amazing equipment. Recently, a new concept of muscle anatomy is advocated by Japanese anatomist Keiichi Akita. It's a new and intermediate conception that marks macroanatomy and microanatomy. With the endoscopic enlarged view, we have been able to recognize the tissue contraction or distribution in the real surgery. Meso anatomy delivers delicate surgery based on more detailed understanding such as small B cells, thin nerve, and especially the fascial structure. The fascia is said to be the discovery of the largest and the newest organ in recently. Some doctors represented by Dr. Gimbelt observed the existed fascia in human body in detail by magnified fine field of view. These have a potential to give us new insight about human anatomy. Fascia is glittering, chaotic, and so beautiful. It consists of collagen, elastin, fat, and water. The three-dimensional fascia structure potentially exists around all human structure as an surrounded environment. It exists so natural in everyday surgery that we do not consider it deeply. The fascia is explained by two structures. One is the tensegrity. And as an aside, the tensegrity theory also applies to the three-dimensional structure of the pelvic bone and the palatable. The three-dimensional fascial structure is maintained by the tension of elastin. Another is the fractal structure. It's so-called cell homology. It is also applied to the capillary artery or peripheral neural structure. It said that genetic information is reduced and saved by homology. Recently, some committee have started to discuss about fascia especially in orthopedic field. However, in neurosurgical field, they are still rarely mentioned. From here on, it's my opinion in order to utilize the fascia for the surgery, we sometimes use the name the fascia in order to create the common understanding in surgery. 
The first year itself is very flexible and tidy in the human body, so it is susceptible to change in the external environment. The name of the first year is not a little externally influenced. One is the embryonic migration of organs, such as intestinal rotation, kidney elevation, or organ regulation, may affect the dance of the first year. Other external factors, such as arterial pulsation, ureter or intestinal peristasis, and so on, also gave some effect to the fascia. However, the factors that mo most affect the structure are our artificial intervention to achieve the surgical purpose. We always create the surgical artifact and then name it. One example is the vesicle hypogastric fascia. Separate the connective tissue between the external iliac vessel cells and the internal iliac artery. Finally, it appears like a seed containing the branches of the internal iliac artery. It is called vesicle hypogastric fascia. However, as you have seen, it's an end result structure where the separated connective tissue just attached. Similarly, the named fascia that looks like a single membrane are uh, all created artifact from unstructured connective tissue to achieve the surgical purpose. Now we introduce a useful fascia concept by Japanese gastrointestinal surgeon Professor Shinohara. He named the loose connective tissue that exists between the structures and it's dissected in the surgery as a dissectable layer. Traction can be spread the width of the layer and it can be divided anywhere thanks to its three-dimensional mesh structure. The dissectable layer is basically the same as fascia, but it is a term that have more surgical meaning. The fascia exists around all base cells and the nerves and the all organs. Therefore, the dissectable layer can be created anywhere by traction. From here, I will indicate the application of this fascia to actual surgery. Fascia can be applied to various surgical scenes, such as minimizing the bleeding, uh, bleeding and uh, packing the tumor, adjusting the radicality of surgery and the nerve swelling. First, the most basic use is minimize bleeding. Here is a fascia around the uterine cervix. By pulling up the peritoneum, we can clearly recognize the loose connective tissue like a spider web. With cutting of only the connective tissue, bleeding is there. A similar layer also can be created between the cervix and the parametrium by traction. This is a microscopic view around the cervix. The cervix is filled with a dense cell population. In contrast, the parametrium consists of many base cells and the connective tissue. We can create a connective tissue layer in border by pulling the parametrium. We pass the needle to the alveolar layer and ligate the parametrium. In the surgery, we use fascia in various scenes and try to reduce bleeding. Second, it's uh, packing the tumor with the fascia to prevent cancer circulate. The basic concept of the dissectable layer is to dissect within the range of fascia, and the target organ is mobilized with an intact fascia package. For example, here is the dissectable layer of the pelvis. Pelvic lymphadenectomy requires unblocked injection of the lymph node mass covered with connective tissue. To between the source measure and the uh, removable adipose tissue, we carefully dissect within the range of the fascia and attach the connective tissue to the uh, excisal tissue. 
The concept has exactly the same meaning as the holy plane and the total mesolectal excision, TME, in collector surgery. The tumor is removed, covered with connective tissue so that it's not exposed. What is the more meaningful is that we can keep the oncologic margin by the dense connective tissue attachment to the ozone. In fact, for rectal cancer, a margin of more than one millimeter from the tumor affects the chance of recurrence. Recently, this TME concept has also been applied to tumors of luminal organs such as stomach and uh, esophagus by Japanese surgeons. However, for now, it's unclear whether this is applied to gynecologic malignancy. Third, adjust the radicality of malignant cases according to the patient risk. Pulling the tissue increases the widths of the dissectable layer and it can also be divided anywhere owing to its you know, sparse structure. For example, we can determine the dissection line close or distant to the tumor as part tumor progression. In TME, the dissection line also can be selected by patients. In urology, to preserve the cavernous nerve in prostatectomy, the dissection line is adjusted within the dissectable layer as part tumor progression. In our field, um, paraortic lymphadenectomy, the dissection line can be adjusted by using the fascial concept. Here are nerve plexus. Here are fat tissue included linked node. As mentioned earlier, the presence of a fascia allows you to freely select the dissection line. So by selecting blue arrow, the nervous can be preserved. On the other hand, by selecting pink arrow, more radical surgery can be performed. We now select the logical dissection line above the nerves to remove a lot of lymph node rather than nerve swelling. Here is the uh, nervous. The last application is nerve swelling. We use the fascia to preserve the pelvic autonomic nerves in radical hysterectomy and endometriosis surgery. As shown on the left, autonomic nerves are formed innumerable fibers, and it's impossible to identify and preserve each of these indiv individually. Therefore, the adhesiveness of the fascia is used to gather nerves to preserve them as a nerve plane. In the nerve spalling radical hysterectomy, the nerves are packed by the fascia and preserved as a nerve plane. Similarly, in the endometrial surgery, we preserve the hypogastric nervous and the blunt to the lectum as a nerve plane. I only introduced a few, however, fascia may have, um, fascia has many meanings and it tends to flexibly by modifying our thought. Fascia can be applied to various surgery with deeper consideration. By being conscious of the fascia, bleeding can be minimized and the surgical accuracy can be improved. For malignancy, unblock removal is possible and the margin can be adjusted for tumor progression. The fascia is so commonplace that it wasn't considered so deeply, but it may be, it may have the greatest potential to improve our surgery. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for uh, Dr. Shiori. So it's it's great uh, presentation. So uh, right now, so it's time to accept uh, the question from the audience. Is there anyone who have a question? If you have a question, please put your comment on to into the question question Q and A. Okay. So I, I, Dr. Shiori, so I like your uh, time, time, terminology, uh, the dissectable layer. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like mm -hmm. it. So uh, my question is, uh, for example, uterus ligament, 
is a kind of a uh, conglomerate of the fascia, I think. So do you use the uterosacral ligament a, a little bit uh, controversial uh, the structure, I think. Do you use, what, what's your opinion uh, uh, the fascia, to, uh, fascia, how to fascia to ha have some connection to make a uh, uterosacral ligament? Do you, do you have any idea? Mm, it's so difficult. I think uterosacral mm. ligament is uh, mm. um, the uh, artifact to, I think. It's uh, uh, near mm. to the uterus. And it, it is a peritoneum fold, I think. Fold. Very hold, uh, okay. The, the distance and the, um, there is no uh, construction. And so mm. only connective tissue. So I think it's uh, only artifact, but uh, in your field, uh, perhaps, <laughs> and then uh, it is very important um, and difficult. But and, uh, in the general surgery or urology, and, uh, there is no uterine ligament, I think. No, okay. It's the only right. um, gynecologic term. So maybe it's uh, uh, you have purpose to um, pull up the uh, uterus by that ligament, but uh, mm, mm, so it's, it's I think it's artifact. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So and uh, one more question about uh, uh, you are doing robotic surgery uh, uh, very aggressively right, right now. Yeah. So yeah. the uh, improvement of the instrument uh, can uh, have some benefit to investigate the fascia structure? Uh, I, I think robotic surgery is uh, suitable uh, when we consider and uh, use uh, fascia because in uh, 3D uh, surgical field and uh, enlarged view, uh, very, uh, we can recognize the fascia clearly. The furthermore, um, laparoscopic and uh, my hand uh, <laughs> 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 stable and uh, accurate Operability, the robotic enables us, us to precise dissection of the fascia even in the enlarged view, I think. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, so, do you have some cases of uh, ureteral injury? Uh, we, we have uh, two questions from the audience. So. Why? One is, do you have some cases of ureteral injuries? Oh, uh, ureteral injury. Um, mm. um, <laughs> actually, I I have no experience of ureteral injury. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, also uh, from the doctor uh, Takemura. So about uterosacral ligament, I think it's a. Uh, combined structure of the fascia and the peritoneum. Ah, uh, yes. How do you think about it? Wow, I, I, think, I think so too, yes. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think so too. So, okay, it's a nice, a nice conversation. So, a uh, nice presenter, thank you for your joining. Uh, okay, so it's time to, sorry? Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, great presentation. Okay, 